Okay, so we are going to be talking about the gas laws, and we're actually going to make be making a foldable in our notebook. When you guys are done, it should look something like this. So you have four of those little foldables. Each of them will open up and have the relationship and also an example problem and some real life examples in them. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll do the front of all of the cards first and then we'll go ahead and start talking about each law individually. Okay. So again, make sure that all four of them will fit on your paper and that, that they fold that way. Okay. The first one we are going to talk about is Boyle's Law. Okay. So, Boyle's Law is where P1 V1 equals P2 V2, or pressure one volume one equals pressure two times volume two, where the constants are the number of moles, which we refer to as N, and the temperature T. After that, we have Charles's law, okay, where it's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. The constants are again the number of moles and the pressure. Um, I have these stars by the temperature and I want you to somewhere on your paper write a little reminder to yourself that when we're doing the gas laws, temperature is always going to be in Kelvin. After Charles's, we're going to talk about Gay-Lussac's law, okay. which relates pressure and temperature. Pressure 1 over temperature 1 equals pressure 2 divided by temperature. Again, the temperatures have those little stars to remind you that temperature is always in Kelvin, and the number of moles, N, and volume are our constants. But if you look at your reference sheet, there is none of these gas laws. Instead, we have the combined gas law, okay? Where it's P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Temperature, again, always in Kelvin. The number of moles is the only thing that is constant, and it's kind of a combination of all of the laws so that it'll, it'll work for any problem that we do. So, you should have all four of those on your paper. Okay? So, we're going to zoom in and talk about each of them individually, and then you can just glue them in um, when you're done. Okay? I'm going to start with oils. So, Boyle's law relates to pressure and volume. Okay. Boyle's law, we typically can manipulate the volume easier than we can manipulate the pressure. Okay. So, we're going to write the relationship. They have an opposite relationship. So, if the volume increases, okay, so if V increases, the pressure will decrease. Or if the volume decreases, pressure will increase, which you guys saw in the simulation, and that also totally makes sense. If the particles have more room to move, a bigger volume, they're not going to hit the walls as much. The pressure is going to drop. Where if you give them less room to move, the pressure is going to increase, okay? We call this an inverse relationship. If we were to graph it, you guys need to be able to recognize these graphs. Okay, At very low volumes, we're going to have high pressure. Okay, 
as you have a little bit bigger volume, the pressure is going to decrease, decrease, and then as you get to bigger volumes, it's going to even out. Okay, so it's this kind of relationship. That's what an inverse relationship looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example problem. Okay, so I'm going to write the example on this flap and then we're going to do the workout in the middle flap. Leave this flap open. We're going to use that to relate it to some real life stuff. Um, but we'll do that in class with some demos. So, at constant temperature, a 500 milliliter gas balloon at 760 torr, it's one of our units for pressure, is compressed to 450 milliliters. What will be the pressure? So at constant temperature, a 500 milliliter gas balloon at 760 torr is compressed to 450 milliliters. What will be the new pressure? And before we do any of these problems, we want to kind of get our expectations set. So, the balloon is getting smaller. It's being compressed. If it gets smaller, do we expect the pressure to increase or decrease? Okay. It will most likely increase because there's going to be less room for the molecules to move. So we expect pressure to increase. based on that inverse relationship we talked about. So let's go ahead and do the work. Remember our equation is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Let's go ahead and write down what all our knowns and unknowns are. P1 equals V1 equals P2 equals V2 equals Okay, so pressure one, it started at 760 torr and 500 milliliters. Okay, and then it got compressed to 450 milliliters, that's a unit for volume, and we're trying to find the pressure. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve it out. 760 torr times 500 milliliters equals P2, which we don't know. You can write X if you're more comfortable with that, times 450 milliliters. To get the P2 by itself, we divide by 450, divide by 450 milliliters, okay? It cancels out there, so we have P2 equals 760 torr times 500 milliliters divided by 450 milliliters. Milliliters and milliliters cancel out. We have 760 times 500 um, divided by 450, which gives us 760 times 500 divided by 450, 844.4444, which we can just round. Um, if we count each of these as having two sig figs, we could go ahead and round it to 840. The units left are tor equals. And is that an increase in pressure from where it started? Yes, it is. So that totally makes sense. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, again, leave this last flap open. We're going to use it um, another day. Okay, so that is boils. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. If the volume goes up, the pressure goes down. If you have a low volume, you have a high pressure. It's an inverse relationship. And we can do the math. The next one we're going to look at is Charles's Law. Okay, where V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Our constants are the number of moles in pressure. We remember to keep the temperature in Kelvin always. Okay, and these ones you might remember from our um, simulations that we did. Okay, we saw that if we increase the temperature, if you added heat to it, the little guy moved backward, okay? The volume also had to increase in order to keep a constant pressure. If you want to keep the same number of molecules running into the walls, but you make it, them move faster, you got to give them more room to move in order to keep that same pressure. And if the temperature goes down, the volume goes down, okay? This we call a same relationship. What does that look like on a graph? Okay. Again, we would be manipulating temperature like we did in the simulation. Okay. Volume on that axis. Okay. And as the temperature goes up, volume goes up. So it just ends up being a straight line. Okay. At constant pressure, a 10.0 liter balloon, okay, so we'll say it was at atmosphere pressure, okay? Balloons like to keep the same pressure, so if you take this balloon, this 10 milliliter balloon, and you cool it, so you put it in a freezer or something, from 500 Kelvin, so it was really, really hot when it was 10 liters, to 100 Kelvin, very, 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 very cold. What is the new volume? First, let's think about it, okay? We are cooling something down, so we're slowing down the molecules, but we want to keep the pressure the same. So if we're slowing down the molecules, we're going to expect this to get a lot smaller too, okay? We expect the volume to decrease. And you might be able to solve this in your head since the new temperature is one-fifth of um, the temperature that it started at. This is also going to be one-fifth. But let's just go ahead and double-check the math on that. Okay. Again, the equation is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V1 equals... T1 equals V2 equals T2 equals. Okay, our first volume was 10.0 liters. Okay, and I'm just going to make these have three sig figs at that decimal. Our first temperature was 500 Kelvin. Second temperature was 100 Kelvin, and V2 is what we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. Okay, so plug and chug. Okay, we have 10.0 liters over 500 Kelvin equals V2, which we don't know, over 100 Kelvin. Okay. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is just to cross multiply. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and cross multiply. So we have 10 times 100, which gives us 1,000. And we have liters in Kelvin there. Um, we won't worry about that for now. Equals 500 times V2. Get V2 by itself. Divide by 500. Divide by 500. This was liters Kelvin divided by Kelvin. It's going to be liters over here. 1,000 divided by 5.0 is 2.0. Because we had three sig figs, I'm going to keep this constant with three sig figs. And it is liters. Which makes sense. The temperature was one-fifth of what it started at. Two is one-fifth of ten. Okay. And it is definitely a decrease in volume. Okay, so 2.00 liters is our answer. Okay, next one. Moving right along here. Is Gay-Lussac's law. Okay. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, where the number of moles and the volume are constant. Just, oops, just like um, Charles's, this one also has a same relationship. If the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. If the temperature goes down, pressure goes down. Okay, which totally makes sense. Okay, if you heat something up, the molecules are moving faster, so they're gonna run into the walls more and the pressure is gonna increase. If you cool something down, the molecules are moving slower, so the pressure is going to decrease. If we were to graph our results from the simulation, what we would see is that as temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Okay, cool. Let's look at an example. In a closed chamber, we'll say closed rigid tank, Okay, so like a tank of gas, it's rigid, meaning the walls aren't going to collapse on itself, which means the volume will be constant. The pressure is lowered from four atmospheres to two atmospheres. And I'm going to change it to 4.0 and 2.0. Sorry, 4.0 and 2.0. If the starting temperature was twenty seven degrees Celsius. What is the final temp? Okay, so let's go ahead and think about it first. The pressure is being decreased by a half, so we expect the temperature to also be decreased by a half. Temp should decrease. Let's go ahead and do the work. Write out all our variables. Okay. 
our pressure started at 4.0 atmospheres and ended at 2.0 atmospheres. Where the temperature started at 27 degrees Celsius and we don't know what it ended at. Wait, 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 wait. Remember we had this little star there? To remind us that the temperature should always be in Kelvin. Okay, whenever we're doing these calculations, we need the temperature to be in Kelvin. So, real quickly, we're going to add 273 to it. When we do that, we get 300 Kelvin. Okay, and we're going to use that as our T1. So now we plug things in again. We have 4.0 over 300 equals 2.0 over T2, which we don't know. So cross multiply, we have 4.0 times T2 equals 2 times 300 or 600. 600 divided by 4.0 is 150 okay. Kelvin. If we wanted to convert that to Celsius, minus 273, and you get negative 123 degrees Celsius. So really, really, really cold. Okay. But it makes sense. The pressure went down by a half. The temperature is going to go by a, down by a half which makes a big difference in the temperature. There's a big difference between 27 degrees and negative 123, okay? We feel differences is really low in pressure. Um, you would not want to be somewhere that had a very low pressure. It would have a very low temperature, and that would not be fun. Okay, last one. Okay. Is uh, the combined gas law. Okay. The combined gas law is super awesome. We can't talk about a direct relationship because there's too many variables. But it can be used... for any gas law problem. By following these steps. One, if something is constant, they can be crossed out of the equation. For example, if temperature is constant, cross out temperatures. And all of a sudden, we have P1V1 equals P2V2, which is Boyle's law with temperature constant. Okay? If pressure is constant, ignore the pressure. Okay? Just ignore it. You have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, which looks just like Charles's okay? with the pressure constant. Okay? So you just cross it out. And then you follow the steps that we always do. Okay? List your knowns and unknowns. And plug in and solve. Okay? Just like we always do. That step one is the only one that's a little different. But sometimes you don't have anything constant, and you do have to use the whole combined gas law problem. So let's go ahead and look at an example like that. A gas sample occupies 
a volume of 2.5 liters at 10 degrees Celsius and 0 0.95 atmospheres. What would be its volume at 25 degrees Celsius and 0 0.75 atmospheres. Okay. So it's getting warmer, so it might get bigger, but it's also going to a lower pressure. Okay, so it's probably definitely going to get bigger. Okay, we definitely expect the volume to increase here. Okay, let's go ahead and solve it out. Because, okay, yeah, getting warmer, that makes the volume goes up. Lower pressure, we expect the vol. Well, if the pressure is decreasing, the volume should increase. Okay, so we do. We expect the volume to increase. Sometimes you won't be able to tell because it'll be doing opposite things, but in this case, we expect the volume to increase. Yep. So, set up a problem. P1, V1 over T1. Write it again so we don't have to flip back and forth. Okay. We can use all three on this one, so don't worry about writing small. Yep. So in this one, 2.5 liters. Okay, that's our starting volume. Our starting temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, and our pressure is 0 0.95 atmospheres. Uh, what would be its new volume? So that's what we don't know. And 0 0.75 atmospheres and <coughs> 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. First things first, we have to convert to Kelvin. Okay. So we add 273, add 273, and we get... 283 Kelvin and 298 Kelvin. Okay. Now we plug in and we solve. So I'm just going to not do units because I think it'll just get too messy. Um, we know what the volume units should be. So 0.95 times 2.5 over 283, sorry, accidentally writing units, habit, times 0 0.75 times V2, which we don't know, over 298. Okay, I'm going to cross multiply. So we have 0 0.95 times 0 0.25, or times 2.5 times 298, which gives us 707.75. I don't want to lose any numbers yet, so I'm not going to worry about sig figs until the end. Equals 283 times 0.75. Point twelve point two five times that V two. Okay, get the V two by itself. Divide oops by two one two point two five. That cancels out, so we have seven oh seven point seven five divided by 
2.25, which gives us 3.33. And since we had two sig figs and everything, I'm just going to round it, and I'm going to say 3.3. We're talking about volume. Our volume here was in liters, so this one is also going to be in liters. And what do you know? That is an increase in the volume. Okay. Once you guys are done writing in all of them, glue them in so that you have your nice, pretty little foldables on the page. Okay, we shut off all four of them, glued down like that with all the flippies in them. Okay, and we'll fill in those last flaps with some demos and such.